we'll, we'll get started because we have quite a few, that's quite an echo, quite a few slides to get covered today. And um, um, welcome to the session on 55 must-haves in every affiliate manager's toolbox. Now, if you are not an affiliate manager, I am very, very happy that you decided to swing by because good two-thirds of these tools you'll be able to use even though you are not an affiliate program manager. Now, as I was... Um, proposing this presentation to Affiliate Summit, I was pretty sure of the structure that it's going to have as well as the content that it's going to have. But then when it got accepted, I, it hit me. How do you make tools sexy? How do you make instruments exciting? And if you know anything about me speaking, you know that my presentations are normally full of lifetime story, um, uh, real life stories and situations and expect to see some unexpected ones in this one too because I, I, I cannot make it boring for you, especially that when I thought that it's challenging enough to uh, make tools exciting, then I find out that I'm speaking right after lunch. How many of you had an espresso li right after lunch? Anyone? Espresso? No, no one did. This is not what we do in this country. This is what we do in the part of the world where I come from. Um, but I'll have to keep you awake. I'll have to be your espresso and uh, your excitement about the tools. Now, the bridge um, is obviously quite uh, uh, sort of evident between espresso and Gino. I have nothing to do with Italy. Not Italian. Apart from the fact that I was born in a country that was once conquered by the Romans, but wasn't this the fact with most of the Europe? Anyway, so um, I was born in Moldova to a Russian-speaking family, hence the Russian last name. Russian is my first language. I attempt to speak some English. As you can see, um, Gino Prusakov is who I am. I run two main things. AM Navigator, which is an outsourced affiliate program management or affiliate marketing consulting agency. We help people who have affiliate programs um, and need external help uh, manage those programs as well as help those who are looking into leveraging affiliates for the benefit of their businesses to grow their businesses. I also run Affiliate Management Days, which is the world's only professional forum for affiliate managers specifically. It's a very niche, tightly knit conference. We hold it once a year in the US. It's coming up in spring. You can check both, my, both of my businesses. The URLs are on the screen, amnavigator.com and amdays.com. My contact information is also on the screen. It's also in the footer of every slide. So you can see um, there's um, my uh, Twitter handle, eprusikov. Uh, and uh, the hashtag for Affiliate Summit, ASW15. So if you find something of interest in this presentation, please do not be shy. Tweet it out. Many people are following this presentation from outside this room. Now, also, they asked me to remind you to fill out the feedback forms that you've received on your way in. This is um, very important for the conference as organizers. There is an incentive. Uh, they will be drawing... Um, random forms um, for free Affiliate Summit passes. So do take the time to fill out that form before you head out. Now with this, let's get started with this picture. And at this time, I'm going to ask you to do something I've never asked anyone to do in my um, audiences. Um, I ask you to close your eyes. Even the macho ones of you that don't close your eyes when a fist is flying at you, or even those people who sleep with the light on. Close your eyes and imagine yourself in a mine, underground. What is the one thing that you're most dependent on for your very livelihood? Oxygen. It's oxygen. It's not air conditioning. It's oxygen. Because this is the one thing that you breathe and this is the one thing that you need. Yet there are these guys and those of you who were closing your eyes just like me can open them now. Methane, which is the most common hazardous gas which contributed to more than 10,000 deaths in underground mines in the past 60 years. Now, there are those two guys as well, nitrogen dioxide and carbon monoxide. They're two, the two most common um, and the uh, most dangerous frequently found gases in underground mines. They kill quickly without warning. Now, go to Google. Open Google Images. Search miners tool for detecting gas. You'll see this. And this, 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 and this, and many more cages with a little bird inside of them. 
How come? Well, up until 1980s, they've been using canary birds as their primary or the most reliable way of detecting dangerous gases. Because this bird that is so sensi sensitive to, um, to uh, um, these gases, well, it's, it also loves singing, so it's like a reverse alarm. When it stops singing, they know it's time to get up and run. When it, God forbid, dies, it's definitely time to run. So here's what I'm getting at. There are always two kinds of tools. Direct tools, or in our context, it would be tools that are intended for affiliate program managers uh, to use, and indirect ones. So the direct ones are originally intended for us, and there are plenty which we can adapt to our usage, but we, we've known them from other um, uh, usages. We'll cover both of these. Now, before we go into the tools, let's also recall the five pillars of affiliate program management. I introduced them in my um, affiliate program management and our a day book, which I will be giving away at the end of this session for good questions asked. I actually have six books total uh, to give away, so the first six people that ask questions will get the books. There are five pillars that I believe every affiliate program manager is responsible for. Number one is affiliate recruitment. You gotta find affiliates to recruit into your affiliate program. Number two is affiliate activation. What good is it to have a thousand affiliates if only two are active? So you gotta constantly activate them. Then there's policing of compliance with your rules in terms of service. There's communication and ongoing optimization of your affiliate program. The idea behind or the undergirding thought behind this presentation is that we want to streamline things, making them more effective, more productive, more efficient by employing faster methods or tools. And so what I'm telling you now, I use the tools that I'm going to show you today, today to streamline the routine tasks, these five pillars, um, the routine tasks that support them and that um, comprise them. We are going to start with tools for affiliate recruitment. There is a total of nearly 80 slides in this presentation. I'm going to go fast. Here's the good news, though, for you. The slides are already on SlideShare, as you've heard today earlier, right before the keynote. So you can open it up on SlideShare. It, they are all available there. So if you don't get to take note of some of them, um, they are all up there. We'll start with the recruitment and with three tools that were intended for affiliate recruitment. The first tool is Linkdex Publisher Discovery. Um, Linkdex Publisher Discovery is, is one of the tools in the suite of Linkdex tools. They are based on Majestic SEO. What they do, they interrogate a bunch of domains across the web. And what Linkdex specifically helps us do is find affiliates who promote our competition. Now, here's a general view of um, how um, the total number of links on different affiliate networks looks. It's not necessarily helpful, but it shows you the magnitude. Uh, the first one, the red bar there, is for Link Synergy or Rakuten Affiliate Network, as LinkShare is now called. The blue one is for share sale. There's no commission junction on here because they use a number of tracking domains, and I just went with the ones that have one. But showing you how you can use this for your particular affiliate program, let me ask you, how many of you are in the travel um, segment or anything travel related? Anyone? About two people, okay, great. So Viator has an affiliate program, right, on share sale. Their affiliate ID or their merchant ID, I'm sorry, is 18208. We plug it into Linkdex, we interrogate this program specific tracking domains and this particular tool yields 539 websites that are linking to Viator through affiliate links. So we know that if this is our competitor and is being promoted on the same network that we already have an affiliate program, we don't have to approve the affiliate on the network level. We can invite them into our program um, by accompanying whatever we saw through this with a good, well put together recruitment email. Another tool is Nerdy Data. I haven't seen many people use it, but they position themselves as a search that finds uh, what other th searches can't find. Anyone in the domaining or um, uh, hosting related niches in this room? Yeah, about three more people. 
All right, let's plug in GoDaddy's um, share sale affiliate ID or merchant ID, I'm sorry, 48436. It's a part of the traditional uh, affiliate URL structure, so this is how their affiliates will link to them. Click search and you get 178 results displayed to you within um, 0.75 seconds. These are all the websites that link to GoDaddy through share sale affiliate links. Now you can download this as well. It costs you money <clears throat> or you can go through these lists by hand and see who works, who doesn't for what you are looking for. Tool number three. One of the newer kids on the block, they launched literally a couple of days ago. It's um, called 5IQ. It's a database of 125,000 affiliate websites sending traffic to 15,000 brands. Now you can search that um, directory by category, by traffic source, and by traffic destination or the merchants that they are linking to. They charge you per line of exported data. It's a pretty cool tool. I got a chance to use it, so it's worth having a look. Here's a, an example of the category bike. They pulled 78 publishers and examples of them are on uh, the right hand side there. Now those were direct tools. But I also urge you to reach out to influencers that can be instrumental in promoting your brand, your product, your service. Here's why also. Influencers earn revenue from affiliate programs. This is the number three most popular method of generating revenue by Technoready Media 2013 Digital, Media, uh, Digital Influence Report. Now, to reach out to influencers would mean, first of all, to me, reaching out to content websites, right? those that have the readership, those that can promote you as well. Bloggers and niche websites, how do we find them? Here are a number of tools that are worth looking into. Blog Dash, Blogger Link Up, Acairn, which um, uh, Spiders not only blogs but also communities. Group High, Inkyb, Outreacher, which also Spiders social profiles, and Pitch It To Me. Like I said, the lists are right there on, link sh on um, SlideShare and you can pull it up and you can um, uh, get those tools from there. But right now, just, just follow the, the overall idea of what I'm trying to communicate here. And in this particular case, I strongly urge you to practice what I call a do it approach. Now every abbreviation that you will hear today was created specifically for you for this presentation. Now this one has four key elements. Disclosures. We, we, there was a session on this earlier today. Great session. Very important subject. Affiliates should disclose their relationship with you. Um, they, in the eyes of the Federal Trade Commission, are your endorsers and you are the sponsor. And if they don't disclose their relationship with you, you may be held accountable. We'll discuss this a little deeper in the compliance related section of this presentation. <clears throat> then there's openness for O. You want to be open to working with them not only merely on um, commission basis. You may um, have to pay a placement fee in certain contexts or offer them a placement fee in addition to the performance based relationship. Additionally, be open to educating them. We've seen that, that this is the number three method of monetizing influencers websites but not number one. I for incentives include both activation based incentives, put up our links, will bump your um, commission by 1% or give you a $5 cash bonus. And then performance incentives. Reach a certain level of sales within a certain uh, amount of time and we'll do something for you. And finally, targetedness. Obviously, you don't reach out to uh, a lingerie blog if you're selling refrigerators. So be very targeted. Be do your due diligence and only then reach out to them. Now, as we look at the most desired affiliate types or the, the websites that merchants desire um, to have as affiliates or the types of affiliates that uh, uh, merchants desire to have, we see that the top two are actually what we've just discussed. Content sites, blogs, now some desire to also have coupons, but look at this one. 28% are looking for social media affiliates, affiliates that use social to um, uh, drive traffic to merchants. And this is per Affiliate Benchmarks 2013 Global Advertiser Research Report. So this, this they were polling advertisers. The next graph shows what some 5,000 affiliates replied when they were asked, so what social media do you guys use? The vast majority of them use Facebook. 
followed by Twitter, followed by Google. So how do we look for potential affiliates on these platforms and others? For social networks, for Google+, Plus, there's circle count and find people on Plus, as well as, Agora, um, as, well as um, Google+, Plus Ripples. Now, for Facebook specifically, Agora Pulse is worth checking out. And for LinkedIn, just right within LinkedIn, they have LinkedIn Pulse. They have posts which you can browse and sort by who is more influential, who uh, is getting um, more traction. For Twitter, look at these tools. Follower Wonk, Social Bro, Topsy, which has a great expert section, which can be very, very handy. Uh, Twilo and Twitter search. And finally, um, speaking of uh, influencer outreach on social media platforms, there's a bunch of cross-platform um, uh, solutions that you can utilize from BuzzStream, which searches all sorts of um, content websites and analyzes them, Clout, which uh, analyzes an array of social media, Cred, which has a great section uh, dedicated to communities, similar to the, sec uh, to the experts uh, that we've uh, talked about. Little Bird, Nod3x is a really cool tool. Free for Google Plus and YouTube, and you can upgrade for it to analyze Twitter, Facebook, and blogs. And then there's Peer Index and Simpler Measured, an, analyti an analytics tool for Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, and Google Plus. How could I go without kidneys? More than 40 times I have spoken um, around the world. This is my 12th time speaking at Affiliate Summit, and never once I've used a kitten in my presentation. And I thought, why not? So here you go, kittens. Why kittens? No, not because they're cute. What are they? What else are they? They are um, somewhat different. The balls, the yarn balls are also somewhat different, but they are all also, both the kittens and the yarn balls, they are similar. So. Similar websites is a really cool technique that we've been using, um, searching for affiliates similar to the ones that are producing well for us, as well as the ones that we couldn't recruit. Case in point, using similarsites.com, we couldn't recruit this particular affiliate, which is digital, digitalphotographyschool.com, which is a great website. I was managing an affiliate program for a photography um, supplies merchant. And um, this great website is being run by uh, Darren Rouse, also known as ProBlogger. It's, it monetizes through affiliate links, but they have their own arrangements with other merchants, and we couldn't work with them at this time, so we searched for similar websites. There's a ton of them. DP Review, short courses, uh, short courses, Cambridge and Color, and others. There are four pages of this, 40. Then you can download the list also. There's a link down there uh, on the bottom. You can also search by similar visits and similar searches. Additionally, they are actually have a free Firefox and Chrome plugin, which is also worth utilizing. I've, I've used this pretty successfully. Besides them, there are these tools that you can use. There's a Chrome plugin called Related Websites. There's SimilarPages.com and SimilarSiteSearch.com. Here's a bonus for you, free, as always, from Google. Uh, related colon URL.com. Say, for instance, you have an affiliate that you really love how they perform, so you'd plug in the, their URL after the column, right into the search bar there. Related colon deal news. Dot com, you get slick deals, deal catcher, deals to buy, fat wallet, and 47 others. You know, I took this picture earlier this summer. I was walking around a little village in northwest Russia. Um, good third of the year, it's snowy there. So people have skiing for PE. What do you do with old skis? I noticed this, a fence. They, someone made a fence out of the old skis, and I thought, I'll take a picture. I don't know well, when I'll be able to use this, but this should definitely exemplify how we can turn an old thing into a new tool or uh, give a new life to an old thing. We're going to talk about backlink tools right now. There's an array of them, and I'm, I'm not going to even try to tackle, to analyze them, but do use backlink tools to find prospective affiliates. I'm gonna, everywhere in this presentation, I'm giving you either free or inexpensive tools so that you could get going quicker with them. SEO Quake has a free toolbar that's worth checking out. Then there's AHREFs, which starts from about $79 per month. 
Um, and then check out this guy. It's called Backlink Watch, which yields about 11% of what Ahrefs yields as far as the number of backlinks, but uh, it's free. So let's take one of the top affiliate programs on share sale. It's been one of the top three and, and the top affiliate program for years. Um, it's called Checks Unlimited. Plug in their URL into Backlink Watch, click Check Backlinks, it yields a list of over 1500 links. <coughs> over 1500 links that are linking to them directly of course. Now these are people that are not monetizing them. It, chances are some of them will be open to monetizing them through affiliate links too. Pay attention to this OBL um, field which is outback links. The ones that have 27, 31, you'll see some have more than 100 are not very good prospects because this is a number of links going out from the same page. Likely it's some sort of banner farm or collection of links that is not probably going to add significant value to your end users. Bonus from Google, link colon url.com. Returning back to the photographic equipment uh, theme, uh, we've plugged in link colon um, adorama.com and got 166 results of websites that are linking to Adorama directly. Now, sure enough, out of these four that you can see on top, at least three would make great affiliates because they are content and blog related type websites. Now, okay, great. So you've found websites that are similar or that link to your competition or that you want to partner with, but how do you contact them? I'll give you three tools. Of course, who is database? Great tool. Some backlink tools, like for instance, um, uh, Internet Business Promoter, already pulls out um, those email addresses where it can find them and gives them to you in a spreadsheet. You can also do it by hand. Say we want to find out a good contact for savings.com, an affiliate website. We go to who is. Type in savings.com, click search, and there we have a lady with a beautiful first and even more beautiful last name uh, in her email address. I don't know the person, um, uh, but this is what, what I find through this. Now, say you want to find someone who um, to contact at freeshipping.com. You do the same, right? You know what to do. But uh oh, free privacy, uh, uh, perfect privacy LLC is what you get for the contact. So this is where peep mail, this uh, tool number 36 comes in. Now when you cannot find out um, uh, the email address from the Whois database, here's what I advise you try doing. It doesn't work 100% of the time but uh, frequently it does. Go to Google and look say um, for freeshipping.com in this case founder. I found Tom over there and go number two go to sammy.pl slash peep mail. Three, I plug in his name, his company, or his domain, and it gives you both options, and click peep, and there you have it. We have his email address. Now, there's another tool when this one fails, you can try Mail Tester, another cool tool. For this, you want to do pretty much the same thing I Googled in the first case. I'll uh, go to LinkedIn, um, look for people who work um, for um, Viglink. Say I'm looking for a good contact at Viglink, and I have these people on my screen. I'll pick on Sharon in this case. So then I go to mail sender and I start trying all the possible sort of like the more common ways to, um, uh, to have an email address um, worded. First name at company name or company URL.com. First initial last name at company URL.com. And I plugged in um, Sharon as a first name and um, it runs a bunch of searches whether um, there is any, whether this uh, domain is being used for email addresses or not, whether um, this is a, a, a um, valid, um, it actually sends, it pings it and then tells you that in this particular case the email address is valid. So you can use it without um, being afraid that it will bounce. Tool number 38 is affiliate directories. We know that some 20% of affiliates actually use affiliate directories. So why not submit your affiliate programs to them? I'm just giving you a few. I'm not endorsing any one of them. There are plenty of them online. Do your own research. Some companies will actually allow you to um, sort of will submit your affiliate program to a bunch of affiliate directories. It costs you some money. In most cases it actually is free if you do it by hand. 
When affiliate benchmarks um, report surveyed advertisers, they also ask them what are the top affiliate recruitment methods that you're seeing as most effective. And the vast majority of them said affiliate network recruitment emails. Now it could be any number of things. So let's turn also into um, uh, to another research by Affiliate Summit's FSTAT report, which asked affiliates the same question. What are your top most preferable ways of finding out about an affiliate program? And guess what? The very first one nearly matched the, the, the previous um, screen. Um, they said they like to find out about affiliate programs through affiliate or CPA networks. So use affiliate networks. Use the tools that you have within affiliate networks if your program is run on an affiliate network to find affiliates. Now this, in the vast majority of cases, is actually a free tool that's underused by many. I call it find and invite. So I'll use um, eBay Enterprise Affiliate Network um, as an example. I go to publishers, recruit publishers, and then I get the screen where I can actually set my criteria. The first one I'm choosing no relationship because I want to find the ones that I'm uh, not working with. Program terms don't apply because I don't have relationship with them so they don't have any commissions from me. Category I'm choosing uh, health and beauty and I'm looking for website or content related affiliates that number one method that um, uh, number one type of affiliates that we're looking for and I'm looking for diet. And there you have it. Something like uh, this shows a hundred results um, of affiliates um, to which I can actually push my offer or invite them into my affiliate program right with an eBay Enterprise Affiliate Network. CJ has a very similar tool. It's been around for some time but it's still in beta as you can see up there it says publisher recruitment beta to differentiate from the, from the other um, publisher recruitment. Um, so here what I did, I searched for genes and it found 50 two websites that have genes in the URL. Um, so I can, again, I can make an offer uh, right there under 52. There is a gray button th that says make offer. I can um, click the box and then make an offer to any one of these or all of these. Linkshare or Rakuten Affiliate Network as it's called right now has a very similar tool right now. Some networks don't have it, others do. Oh, here's a very <coughs> convenient thing. It is uh, a download button. You can download it as an Excel spreadsheet. There are also free exposure opportunities that affiliate networks offer you and many of us are not utilizing them. I'll give you just a few examples. CJ has a CJ monthly newsletter into which you can actually get placement for free provided that your offer is enticing enough or your promo or whatever campaign you're proposing. You run it by um, CJ and if it makes into the newsletter it makes into it. Rakuten has new and notable advertisers blog. ShareSale has a new and notable merchants posts, deals databases, uh, the regular one as well as the Black Friday and Cyber Monday one. Avantlink has social media, does social media announcements and WebGains has a publisher newsletter. Especially when we're talking seasonal um, or um, season specific merchants, they will actually approach you and ask you, do you have anything to offer our affiliates? We do want to give you the exposure. Then there are paid exposure opportunities also within the network. There are plenty within every network. I'll use share sale for an example. If you go to um, tools and click on become a featured program, you actually get a number of opportunities to get your ad in front of share sale based affiliates in the areas where you want them to see it, be it the home page or the page, the very first page they see when they log into your account or it could be the category within which you are placed. Now the one area or the one um, opportunity where we've seen best success on this particular network is what they used to call holiday center. Now it's called holiday sponsored ads and you can see right now this, these are the ads for the Valentine's Day. Two merchants. They have some 4,000 merchants on the network. There are two here. Go through the other network, through the other holidays over there at St. Patrick's Day, March Madness, Easter. You'll see two or three or maximum four. This is, this is a widely underused opportunity, yet it's so fruitful. Check this out. The conversion 
is through the roof there. Look, at, it's, it's about 50% out of the affiliates that click on the ad, they convert into an affiliate. They sign up with the affiliate program. Like that one on the very bottom, uh, out of 403 affiliates, 223 signed up out of the um, 403 that clicked the ad. Now let's talk about tools for activation. Now, like I said, what good is it to have a bunch of affiliates if the vast majority of them are inactive? And I'm not going to ask you to raise your hands. I used to do it every time I talk about this subject. It's clear to me that unless you're weeding out, as some would characterize the activity, which is a plain stupid activity, uh, deleting affiliates from your affiliate program if they're not active, unless you're involved in anything like this, in the vast majority of cases, only about 10% of affiliates in the program are really, really active and sending you, constantly sending you sales. Then some 90%, between 80 and 90 are actually stagnant. Now I could choose red for the color of the lower part of the circle, but I chose green because to me, this spells one word and the word is opportunity. This is your low hanging fruit. You didn't make them join the program. They joined your program, they had an idea in mind, they got deviated and at some phase you want to uh, resurrect that interest and get them active with your program. Tool number 42, affiliate segmentation. Now, a good friend of mine, Carolyn Kmet, uh, who used to be the director of affiliate marketing at Groupon, says, guys, you segment your consumers, don't you? So why don't you do the same with affiliate? Segmentation can be applied to the affiliate marketing channel, and just as different types of customers require different levels of service, different types of affiliates require different resources. Now, there are, you can segment them by various criteria. Let me give you just a couple of examples. You can segment them by type. You can also segment them, and type would be coupon affiliates or content affiliates or social media affiliates that we've spoken about. Uh, performance would be another type of segmentation and it doesn't have to be mutually exclusive. They could be in, in more than one group. Um, then fourthly, niches in which they work. And fifthly, the terms uh, or, or payments that they are getting from you. Now, affiliate networks will actually provide you with great tools to segment your affiliates. Like on ShareSale, look at this. You can go to affiliates and group affiliates. On ZJ, you can go to manage affiliates and then buy group and you can create a new group. You can also go to web gains and add a new group of affiliates. Affiliate networks give us the tools. Very frequently they will actually manage our affiliate programs by default, but they give us the tools to manage our affiliate programs and we should be utilizing it, uh, utilizing them. 42 is an uh, uh, affiliate segmentation tool that, that's available on most networks. 43 is email. Well, why? Look at this. Afstat report says that 82% of affiliates prefer to be contacted how? by email. And only 3% or 3.1% um, want to be contacted by phone. Now, email, in my opinion, can be of two kinds. It can be group email or individual email. Now, uh, by group email, I would mean regular newsletters, segment-specific emails, we've talked about segments just now, and announcements of all sorts to uh, very specific um, uh, groups. Individual emails, here are just a couple of examples. Acceptance email, tool approval email, and one-on-one -on -one outreach. Now, I, I'm, I'm not gonna go into this, this could take a, a whole presentation of its own, but I'm gonna pick that tool feed approval email. This is something that I literally have not seen anyone use. Let me give you an example. On share sale, we have FTP um, uh, feed approval uh, requests. Affiliates want to access our data feed. What can we do when we have a request? We can tick the FTP access button and we can click update FTP access. That's what most of us do. But what I recommend account managers to do within my company is use this little a link. It says contact. So what do I do here? Besides approving them, I accompany the approval email. Uh, I, I've given it out. I accompany the approval with the email. In this particular case, I say, 
congratulations, you've just been approved to um, uh, access this particular um, affiliate program's data feed. Now import it soon and within the next two months generate $799 in sales and I will deposit a $50 cash bonus right into your share sale account on top of your commission. And then I'm giving them the AOV stats but very few people use it as an activation tool and it should be used as one. Email of this type. Now you've probably noticed that we've just gotten to column number three and we've spent some 75% of the time on tools for recruitment and activation and there is a reason behind that. Recruitment and activation are so important that I, if I were you as merchants, I would expect my affiliate program manager to spend some 75% of the time on recruiting affiliates and on activating them. Now speaking of compliance however, this is our pillar number three, let's not call it a violation unless we've defined it as such in our terms of service. Very many merchants would say, oh, they're bidding on our trademarks or registering uh, domains with our uh, trademarks in them. Uh, they're violating, should kick them out of our affiliate program. But have you defined it as a violation, as something that they should not or cannot do? What should you um, uh, define and then police compliance with? First of all, trademark abuse in paid search and in domain names. Secondly, coupon usage. Do you allow affiliates to um, feature your coupons? Do you even have coupons? If you do, do you allow them to use just the coupons that are within your affiliate program or any coupon that they can find, including harvesting or um, harvesting them from social media, emails, or you know, some affiliate websites would actually have a function where the end user can submit a coupon and others can vote on it. The Federal Trade Commission disclosures, which we'll talk about in a second, we've alluded to it uh, not too long ago, and brand placements. Now one by one, illustrating it with the tools to use. For search or paid search, check out Brand Verity. Now here's a very vivid example when uh, a number of affiliates, in this case we see two, that are uh, bidding on variations of Walmart coupon or Walmart coupon code. And they are um, on Linkshare, um, we know their uh, link share IDs, we can reach out to them and we can uh, ensure that they uh, stop or we can find them and kick them out of the program if it's already that bad. We can even see uh, copies of the ads, we can see the dates when, it, when they occurred. They actually have a very similar tool for coupons. If you restrict affiliates from the usage of specific coupons, you can actually use the same tool. Brand Verity has a, um, has a functionality which allows you to monitor coupon codes. You can see specific coupon codes, where exactly they appeared. You can see a bunch of websites where they shouldn't be uh, per the merchant's terms of service, yet they are there and we can see their link share uh, IDs as well as the number of times the violation occurred from one to seven over there in, or actually nine uh, in the last column. Now another tool that's pretty cool for search is called the search monitor. Now in this particular example, we can see this ad for auto parts warehouse. It's a hijacked ad. It goes to the auto parts warehouse website, but through an affiliate link. The, if you strip this uh, link, and I'll give you a few tools to strip links later on in this presentation, you will actually arrive at auto parts warehouse, but it, the commission junction cookie will be set and the affiliate will get the credit. Now here's the part that I especially like, knockout percentage. In this particular case it says 5.26 and here's what it is. The knockout value is uh, the search monitor's way of saying uh, here's, your here's your loss, here's um, the percentage of time that the wrong ad is showing. Now in this particular case the affiliates ad or the violating affiliates ad is showing only in 5.26 percent of the time. But look at these. And for Amazon in, in the very first case it's uh, the knockout percentage is 0.31 but for some of these it's 82.35 or even 100 percent. Tool number 46, for URLs, check out Typo Assassin. Here's an example. Medifest is a client of mine and we monitor domains that are um, either um, variations of uh, Medifest or contain their um, uh, trademark. We use this tool, you can see that they pull data from who has database giving you domain names, uh, the dates they were registered, contact information wherever it is found. Another tool that's worth checking out for URLs is Citizen Hawk. It's been slightly, um, it's been around for slightly longer than uh, Typo Assassin. 
Uh, it's a really cool tool. For Facebook, uh, through this tool, we found 607 domains that are variations, misspellings or variations of Facebook. And these last two columns are especially interesting. Traffic, if they get some traffic, we can actually see how much they get. And um, the type of website it is, whether it's a parked page or um, it diverts traffic in a certain way or it's an affiliate page. So this is a cool tool to, um, to explore as well. Now to the Federal Trade Commission compliance or that need for the affiliate to have disclosure on their website that they are sponsored by you or that they are being paid through the sale happen. Now, if you don't have affiliates display that, you may be charged um, with disseminating deceptive advertising. We've had an instance like this and they settled with the FTC, but e essentially what the FTC says if you have affiliates, they should be disclosing their relationship with you as a sponsor endorser relationship. They are your endorsers, you sponsor them. Now, up until literally this year, I, I, haven't, I haven't seen actually anyone use the tool that I'm going to show you right now. Many affiliate program managers do it by hand. They would routinely check the lists of the top 20 uh, um, affiliates that they work with. And, um, and see whether they have disclosures on their websites. They go to the websites and see if there's disclosure. Now there's a tool for that. It's called Media Thirst. Here's an example. Um, Coupon Caboodle runs a, an affiliate slash referral type affiliate uh, type program. They pay $1.40 for every email sign up for their free coupons. And if we uh, use uh, Media Thirst, we find this, uh, you can hardly see it there on the screen. It's a Singapore based URL, um, which actually um, down here it, it, it also tells you the type of violation. It says fails to, uh, to disclose commercial relationship between advertiser and seller. And it uh, defines that as an FTC violation. It actually strips down the URL down to the very last uh, URL that shows in the address bar of the end user and you can actually see how the end user will be routed and then it shows you where the ad is being shown for a Singapore based domain name the vast majority of their traffic is out of Texas, Nevada, California and Illinois, go figure. Monitor also brand placements because that's your most valuable asset and you're entrusting affiliates with it. Here's our brand, promote it. But do you know how they promote it? Well, here's one way to use LinkedIn, and I'm not marking it as an additional tool because we've talked about LinkedIn already, but you can actually search by your very um, uh, merchant ID and see, um, or actually in this particular case, we search by specific affiliate ID and see all of the websites on which they advertise using uh, their own affiliate ID for our program. In this case, it's 155 sites. Then an example from CJ, same type deal, um, filter um, on tracking domain for a single affiliate ID and we find 34 websites on which they have our ad um, linked through this particular, this is actually our very link. Um, so we can see where they advertise us. <coughs> now, very frequently when we find a violator, they are not stupid. They mask the, the URL. And uh, we have a need to strip down the, uh, the redirects. And there are a bunch of tools that do that. There's, uh, I'll give you three that dissect redirects for free. Uh, the one that I use is called Temper Data. It's a, um, a Firefox add-on. Then there's Rex Swain's HTTP viewer. And Fiddler, which actually sits on top of the browser, monitors, logs everything. Very cool tool as well. But let me use Temper Data as an example. Here's a website. We don't know if it's an affiliate website. We see, for instance, our brand. Over there, you, on top, you can see small business marketing plans. And clearly, it's a Google ad. There's a little icon on the top right-hand corner. But down there, uh, where you see Hootsuite ad, um, under which it says advertise here, we don't even know if that's an affiliate ad. Or if it is an affiliate ad, how exactly they are uh, routing to this particular um, affiliate program. So if we click on the ad, judging by the address bar, we cannot tell anything. It just says learn.hootsuite.com. 
However, if prior to clicking it, we launch this 100% free temper data plugin, here's what it shows us. It actually shows us all the URLs through which it goes, and we know that there is a CJ tracking domain involved, and we got lucky here, we can actually see their uh, publisher ID. So if we use this for affiliate recruitment, for instance, we can actually push them an offer within CJ, or if we use this for compliance reasons, then we can actually find the exact affiliate, whether they have this particular domain listed on their profile or not. Area number four out of five, and we have just a handful of tools to go through. Um, the area is communication tools. Now for communication, get a good CRM platform to manage your relationship with existing and prospective affiliates, whatever, wherever your preference is, whether it is Nimble or it is Sugar CRM, Salesforce, Infusionsoft, or Microsoft CRM. Additionally, get a good HTML editor. Now, I see very many merchants just use whatever the network allows within the platform or send out plain text emails. They don't look as sexy. Get a good free one. There, there's a bunch of free ones. There are free browser add-ons that you can use for that purpose. I use what used to be called Macromedia Dreamweaver, which is Adobe Dreamweaver. Now, um, if it's too pricey for you, there's Weebly, there's Firebog, which is a uh, free browser add-on, uh, coding the web, a Chrome extension, and there's a bunch of other ones. You can use these to prettify your emails, your affiliate program sign-up page, uh, for all sorts of communication as well. Now, speaking of optimization, I'll give you just two tools. There are, there are plenty of ways to optimize your affiliate program, but the two most um, efficient ones that, that I see working very well is, number one, one spying on your competition and replicating what works for them or learning from what works from, for them. And the second tool I'm gonna give you in a second. But if you are spying on competition and informing yourself of every aspect of their affiliate program activities or performance, keep in mind that you're doing this for very specific reasons. Not to report it to your superior, but to learn and to act. So here's an example, SEM Rush. Um, we went to ugaustralia.com and analyzed it on the domain level. We see the backlinks there, the third column, 58.1 thousand links. And then we drilled down into them. There's 4.5 thousand, uh, 4,500 referring domains. And we, we can actually see them all. We can sort them by influence. We can see who to reach out to, be it for recruitment or whatever other reasons. Now here's a, a, a portion of this tool that I don't know anyone using. Or at least if they are, they are hiding it and they should be because it's, it's a great thing. <clears throat> you can actually find out where exactly your competitor displays AdSense units. AdSense Publisher Search will basically give you prospective affiliates. They offer space to your competition for, to, for advertising through AdSense, so provided you have banners that match the traditional sizes of uh, AdSense units, you can reach out to them and you know, they're obviously open to the idea of monetizing their website, at least through AdSense here and affiliate marketing is not very different from that. Finally, there's becoming their affiliate as a tool that you should be using and, and honestly, I, I, I have a separate email box that, that gets bombarded by uh, in newsletters from affiliates um, that don't know that I actually am spying uh, from, from merchants, I'm sorry, that don't know that I'm spying on them. But do that um, from, um, from obviously not from your corporate domain or your um, real name, but do spy on them. And do it on five very specific reasons or for five very specific things. Are to research. Research their terms of service, stats, performance of their specific creatives or better performing uh, promos. E for evaluate, how you stack up. A for apply the knowledge to craft your own strategy, right? We did it to learn and to act, not to just document it. And finally, ladies and gentlemen, tear them apart. This is it from me as far as the tools go. And in conclusion, I'll leave you with a quote of one very, very wise woman, Eleanor Roosevelt, who said that, I think at a child's birth, if a mother could ask a fairy godmother to endow it with the most useful gift, that gift should be curiosity. 
And I, I and this is really the thing that you don't want to lose at any time. Curiosity. Stay on top of the most uh, of the newest tools that appear out there, and uh, and think of how you can use the old skis um, in a new way. Um, this is really it from me right now. We have some time for questions. About. 10 minutes. Um, if you do have a question, there is a mic there which we want you to use because this is being recorded. And I, like I said, I have six books that I'll give away. Uh, three of them uh, are copies of my best selling affiliate program management in our day book, and um, three copies. Uh, three copies of a smaller uh, sort of brochure type book, Quick Start Guide to Affiliate Marketing. So first come, first serve. Out of the first six, I guess the first three will have more choices. Uh, my question is about the personality that an affiliate manager should have. When a company is recruiting for affiliate managers, what should the personality be of an affiliate manager? That's a lovely question. I've, I've actually never had anything like this asked before. One may argue that uh, it, it has to be a salesperson. Um, I know a lot of great affiliate managers that are not great salespeople, but they have salespeople or people they, uh, they work with, and I'm referring to outsourced program managers. If you're, um, if you're hiring someone as an in-house affiliate program manager, I don't know if personality really will be the number one trait that you should be looking for. It's sort of like uh, with leadership. If a person is not charismatic, are they necessarily a bad leader? Um, it's, there are plenty of other traits that can compensate for that. I think that expertise, experience, um, connections um, should prevail. But uh, as far as the uh, personality, I guess it depends on, your, on your, how your team is built and how he or she will, will be expected to fit in. But good question, very good question. I should start thinking in that direction, maybe write a blog post. Hi, everyone. Uh, my question is related to the affiliate recruitment. So thank you very much for sharing all these sites that can find relevant content to the product we are promoting. But what about the tools that can tell us how much traffic, how much readership, viewership we can gain from the affiliate websites? I don't know of a single tool that will tell you how much traffic or viewership you will gain through them. There are tools that can measure what they do. Plenty of tools out of the ones that I've mentioned, they will also give you the, the statistics on, um, on the traffic that they get. The question is where exactly your ad will be placed, how many, um, what's, what the click-through rate will be. You can analyze it by your um, niche and see what's, what's the right assumption for your niche for a specific placement that gets 1,000 visitors a day, what the click-through rate will be, and sort of do your math there. But it will be very tentative, and only experience will show. But I don't know of a tool that me measures, that tells you how much traffic to expect from an affiliate. There are tools like Quantcast, uh, um, Compete, and um, um, there's uh, SEM Rush that I've mentioned, and What Runs Where that you can use to sort of portions of them for, for um, uh, determining how much traffic approximately they get, but not how much you will receive. There, you can do some math. A good question. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Yes, sir. So uh, what sites do you use to keep track of uh, all these new tools, and uh, what's on your top reading list for that? What was the sec what was the second question? What, what oh yeah, I, basically what sites do you look at to keep oh, track what, of new tools? What sites do I use to keep track of the new tools? Um, there are plenty of um, uh, blogs out there um, that are worth following, um, but unfortunately, I, I actually don't see much done in uh, affiliate program management education specifically, so it's sort of all disjointed. I, uh, I just attend conferences that, that may be of interest to me or, or, or may be applicable, be it you know, um, a search conference. Uh, I spoke at, once, at one conference once and uh, really enjoyed some of the tools that I've heard there. Apparently, say for Google+, 
if you are looking for an influencer in Plus, there's always a, a, um, an email associated with a Google Plus account. So there are ways to actually pull out that data, um, and they do this uh, when they build links. Um, use your imagination. I, don't, I cannot pinpoint top three good sites that publish uh, information on tools or, uh, or, or new tools. Um, but uh, yeah, monitor social and um, and sort of like there is there are these lists of the top 25 performance marketing influencers that are being put to put together yearly now by Impact Radius. Um, there is a list of the top I want to say 25 um, uh, blogs um, worth following put together by Affiliate Summit yearly as well. So um, check out those resources. Maybe you'll find something there. We have five more minutes and three more books. Go ahead. In your experience, um, outside of the United States, which countries have the most talented affiliates and which countries have uh, affiliates that drive the most fraud? And the first group was most powerful affiliates? Talented. Most Talent. talented affiliates. Mm -hmm. That's a very good question. Maybe, maybe the answer to both questions would sometimes even coincide because to drive um, uh, hard to detect fraud, uh, y you need a degree of talent. Uh, I don't know the answer. I've, I, and I, I try not to tie um, uh, success to ethnical characteristics. I, I think this is just not right on many levels. Um, I've seen a lot of interesting work done uh, out of Israel um, as far as the new ways to, to monetize websites. As far as fraud, there are some very specific countries that I um, do recommend um, sort of uh, setting up as countries not to approve affiliates from, uh, but uh, <coughs> You can go to my blog and, and search for um, affiliate approval criteria, and the list will be there. It changes constantly. It's, it depends on your business, too. Um, but interesting question. Thank you. Two more? No? Yes, sir. Uh, by the way, one book is enough, but uh, I have more questions. So for detecting fraud, you mentioned a lot of tools for finding affiliates, for maybe managing them, and uh, competitive research. Uh, what about fraud detection? How do you protect yourself from bots and you know other kind of fraud? Um, good question. There are, um, uh, on network level, or in platform level, um, when you choose to to work with um, with a uh, sort of solution um, provider, like I said, affiliate networks will give you the infrastructure. They won't manage the affiliate program for you, but very frequently they will see some things that you will not see, or you as an affiliate program manager should routinely analyze spikes uh, in traffic uh, or conversions. Um, and those should be your red flags. I don't know of tools that, uh, that actually um, sort of notify you of that, apart from compliance departments within affiliate networks, which all of them have, or all of them say they have. Any other questions? We have about two What's minutes. What's the uh, most important thing for new affiliate managers to focus on, and what are the most common pitfalls that new affiliate managers usually fall into? That's a beautiful question. I um, would say that if I were to pinpoint one, it would be sort of, well, a couple. Uh, making assumptions of affiliates without doing research. Um, doing something without thoroughly educating yourself about how exactly it works and what exactly this may mean, whatever you see as far as the stats go. Um, 
I, I, I'd say education, which, I, like I said, is uh, can be gained from from related uh, resources as well as what uh, some of these blogs that I've mentioned um, or uh, lists of blogs uh, where you can find blogs um, tell you about. But uh, I think that the lack of education, sort of assuming, making assumptions, is, is one of the deadliest that I've seen. And also terminating affiliates from your affiliate program if they are not active. It's one of those similar type of things. Um, if they are not active, they, are, they may be driving down um, your performance indicators down when your boss is asking you, well, why are there so many of them and uh, uh, such a small percentage active? Uh, but yeah, those would be the key ones, I guess. I, don't, I think we're out of time, yet there is a half an hour break, as far as I understand, between this session and the next. So if anyone has questions afterwards, if you want to grab my card and contact me later if you're shy about the microphone or you see my contact information on the screen as well, email me, tweet to me. I will reply to every one of you, I promise. Thank you for being such a great audience.